والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله الأمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله and welcome to mercy to mankind صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم Last time we met we talked about the redigging of Zamzam well and one would ask, what is the importance of Zamzam well? What's so special about Zamzam that people are making so much fuss about and wanting to control it and to have the honor of giving access to it to the people? Zamzam is a sacred water. It is sacred water in the sense that the blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal is in Zamzam. Our Prophet ﷺ told us a lot about Zamzam. And we believe in this holy water in the sense that it has uh, uh, characteristics that other water uh, uh, does not have. There was a hadith in uh, Sahih Muslim. And this hadith was narrated by Abu Dhar. Al-Ghafari, may Allah be pleased with him. He was from the village of Ghafar. And they used to loot people and uh, 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 hijack things. And they were without any objective. They, they just lived their day without knowing what to do. Abu Dhar al-Ghafari tells us about himself as being, worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal, praying to Allah Azza wa Jal, three years before the Prophet ﷺ was sent to mankind. And those who asked him, how did you pray? Who did you pray to? I prayed to Allah. I knew that there was a creator to this universe. So what did you do? He said, I just prayed. To whatever direction I can face, I just prayed to Allah to guide me. Abu Dhar, his mother, and his brother Anis, traveled after a problem took place between them and their uncle. And they left. And Anis, the brother of Abu Dhar, went to Mecca and came back telling his brother that, I heard of a man and I, uh, that worships the same God you worship. So he told him, what was it? He told him, they say that he is a sabit. He is an unbeliever of the idols. They call him a sabit. And this was a capital uh, crime that needed punishment. So Abu Dhar went to Mecca and he went in secrecy. He did not want to announce his presence to the people as he was investigating this uh, so-called prophet. And the minute he went into the masjid, to the haram, he saw a man and he went and whispered in his ear. And he told him, uh, uh, what's the news about this Sabi, this man who abandoned worshipping the idols? This is the only thing he said. So it was not very uh, uh, um, obvious. He's just asking. He's a stranger. And the minute this man heard this, he shouted in the whole masjid, this is looking for the Sabi, this one is looking for the Sabi, which means that he's a follower. And immediately, everyone picked whatever they could, bones or stones, and they threw him and beat the hell out of him until he fainted and he was covered with blood. 
And an hour or two later, he was left to die. Because he's a stranger. They, they had no problem in killing people. They had no problem in especially attacking strangers. others. Especially strangers who had no support or backup or any uh, uh, family to uh, um, protect them. So he woke up three or four hours later. He went to the well of Zamzam and he washed the blood off. And he took hiding for a whole month. He just, he, he hided in the Kaaba and in the surrounding area for a whole month. He says about himself that I did not have anything to eat for a whole month except the water of Zamzam. Now, this is incredible because one would say, you cannot live on water alone. We say, yes, but Zamzam is not water alone. And this is why I mentioned this story to tell you that Zamzam water is a sacred water. Prophet ﷺ told us that the water of Zamzam is food to whomever feeds on it. And it's a cure to whomever seeks cure in it. And this has been practiced, alhamdulillah, by most Muslims, by myself, by everybody else. We find it to be cured to a lot of the diseases. If you have an infection, if you have problems, you just take water of Zamzam and drink as much as possible and you will be cured. Especially in uh, uh, protecting our children, in uh, curing those who have bad spells, magic on them, uh, uh, evil eye, envy, whatever. We tell them, bring the water of Zamzam, recite the Fatiha, blow in it the, the the last chapters of the Quran three chapters of the Quran ayat al-kursi and then drink of it and wash the area that hurts and you suffer of and inshallah you will find the, the, the cure in the water of Zamzam okay but the, the most important to believe in Allah the who cures this this is by yes. default yes. because what made you go to Zamzam Definitely, it's the Sunnah, yes. and the Sunnah comes from Allah Azza wa Jal. And by no doubt, everything a Muslim does is in in, in accordance to its, his belief that Allah Azza wa Jal <coughs> is the one that cures. Yes. And for example, as Muslims, we believe that honey is a form of medicine, yes. and researchers are d revealing to us that it is indeed Proof one of the is. greatest cures of, 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 of uh, diseases. Yes. Yet, if someone takes honey, believing that honey by itself cures, but it's not Allah, this is shirk. Yes. He's asso associating someone else with Allah Azza wa Jal. No, you have to take honey, and you have to believe that Allah Azza wa Jal is the one that cures. You have to get married in order to have children, but you have to believe that it is Allah, the Almighty, that grants you and gives you these children. <coughs> Coming back to our story again, Abdul Muttalib already was given the control over Zamzam water. But after what? After they almost died and perished in the desert, after he was uh, uh, overwhelmed by the other families, he felt weak and vulnerable. So he made an oath to Allah Azza wa Jal. Did he see a dream like uh, Ishmael, or, uh, like Abraham, or uh, dream or regarding? Did, did did he know about the story about uh, Abraham and Ishmael? Of course, everyone knew about this story, but he made this oath in order for him to get what he wants. It, his main objective was yes. to get those strong men, his sons beside him. To protect him and defend him. Yes. So he was willing to have nine to sacrifice the tenth. The tenth. So he had, he had uh, uh, the intention to do this, but he was not doing this as a form of worship. He just wanted to get the nine uh, sons of his. He made this oath, but he did not forget about it. And Allah Azza wa Jal gave him the ten strong, healthy, sons of his own and when the tenth was born and reaching the age of puberty and they all became strong 
men beside him, he told them that now is the time and I have to fulfill my oath to my Lord. The people, the family of Quraysh came to him and said, come on, you cannot do this. All of your, your, your children are wise and strong men. We respect them. We are willing to do whatever you want. But don't do this. They are begging him not to kill one of his children, though they are not related to him. But they respect Abdul Muttalib. They honor him, and at the same time, they do not want to see one of his children uh, uh, killed. Abdul Muttalib did not retreat. He said, I made an oath, and I have to protect my word to my Lord. One of them has to die. So the people of Quraysh said, no way, you cannot do this. And they wanted to prevent him even by force. So as a compromise, they told him, let us go to a priest again, to a fortune teller again, and seek her assistance. Fortune teller was the solution for all problems. At the time, yes. it was indeed the solution of all problems. And unfortunately, even nowadays, we have presidents that have fortune tellers telling them what to do, whether to go into war or not. We have uh, uh, influential people, rich people, uh, seeking their knowledge, and they don't have any knowledge. It's just that man, by nature, wants to be led, wants someone to give him the direction so that he would relieve himself from responsibility. So if you come to me and say, do this, though I am not determined and I don't want to do it, but I'm willing to do it, so if it fails, I'm going to blame you for that. And if it uh, um, goes through, well, I'm going to take all the credit for it. So they went to this fortune teller. And this fortune teller told him that there is a solution out. And that is that we should draw the lots and see whether it says kill one of your children or uh, 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 give ten camels as sacrifice. But before that took place, and I forgot to mention this, Abdullah, uh, Abdul Muttalib, uh, drew the lots to select which one of his children to kill. And it was Abdullah, the father of our Prophet Muhammad who was chosen to be sacrificed. And he was the most beloved son to his father, Abdul Muttalib. So now the problem is, is doubled because it's not one of his sons only, but one of the most uh, beloved sons to himself. So they went to this fortune teller and this fortune teller told them you have to draw the lots to know which one to choose. And so they did. It's a kind of balls, draw lots. It's a kind of balls or... Uh, it, it's a kind of straws. It, it's some of it has, or, or arrows that yes. says you do this or you do that. It, just to choose from it what uh, uh, the, decision, the, the decision was to be made. Uh, I think... We have uh, a short break, and afterwards, inshallah, we will continue with the story of sacrificing one of Abdul Muttalib's sons. So, uh, uh, be with us. We will be right back. Prophet ﷺ have informed us that we should not obey no one on the account of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the superiority is to Allah's command. So the husband tells his wife that I want you to check hands with my colleagues, with my business partners. No, even if it leads to divorce. If the husband says to his wife that you have to party with me, with partners and so on. No, you have to take your hijab off. No, by any means communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, definitely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows your language and he would be very happy to answer your dua. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and welcome back. 
Just before the break, we uh, uh, discussed how Abdul Muttalib and the people of Mecca were in dispute regarding sacrificing one of his sons and the chosen one was Abdullah, the father of our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And when they went to this priest or fortune teller, they were told that there is a, a way out and that is that you choose, ask the gods to choose between slaughtering Abdullah or uh, uh, ten camels as sacrifice instead. So they drew the lots and it was said, sacrifice Abdullah. So they added another ten and again, sacrifice Abdullah and another ten and another ten and another, until they reached 100 camels. And that was indeed a fortune. And when they reached the number 100, then the lots t told them that, okay, sacrifice the camels and Abdullah was spared. And he did so. Why camels especially? Camels to the Arabs are the most valuable animal uh, uh, around at the time. And in the Holy Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us to, to look at how great and magnificent the camels are. How were, they were created. And I believe that though we are living in the age of airplanes, uh, uh, fast trains and transportation and mobiles and so on, computer, internet, yet we did not do the camels uh, its justice. Because Allah did not mention the camel in the Quran without any legitimate reason. If researchers looked into how the camels uh, are created into their characteristics and specialties, I believe that they will find wonders and wonders of Allah Azza wa Jal. Otherwise, Allah would not have told us to look into how the camels were created among all animals. He only specif uh, specifically chose the camel for us to observe and to research. So, I believe that we did not do the camel it's justice by not looking into it. But I believe that there will come people and scientists to look into this uh, and problem. And this is called the desert ship, the camels. It is called uh, the, 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 the ship, ship of the, the desert, desert or whatever because it can live and travel in the desert like no other animal can. Uh -huh. And it's equipped with so many things. In, indeed, it's a four-wheel drive animal you know it has its, its provisions in it it has its, its, its water and, and, and food and it can go on for seven or ten days without feeding and, and subhanallah there are so many things in camels so Abdullah was spared and the camels were sacrificed to their idols and claiming to be to Allah the Almighty and why was that that was to prove to the people of Mecca that Allah Azza wa Jal has spared Abdullah in order for something that is so high and important, and that is to be able uh, for Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be born from the offsprings of Abdullah marrying the mother of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Amina. Then Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is called Ibn al-Dabihayn, the son of the two. So that is exactly, uh, uh, precisely how he is called. He, the Prophet Sallallahu said about himself that I, I am the son of the two slaughtered ones, though they were not slaughtered. Yes. The first one was Ishmael, when Allah Azza wa Jal, as we mentioned in, uh, in an earlier program, Allah has instructed him, revealed to him that he must slaughter his son Ishmael, and just as he was about to do that, Allah Azza wa Jal gave him this huge ram to slaughter and said. And this is what all the Muslims do every single year in the festival or in the Eid of Al-Hajj. They sacrifice a sheep, a ram, or a cow, or a camel. This is, is also acceptable, yeah. sacrificing a, sh a, sh a, a camel or a cow suffice seven, seven. people. Mm -hmm. But ch sacrificing one sheep is enough for one person and his 
family, those who, whom he support. And we do this, and, and it's, it's very strange. You, he, you have people defending the animal, animal rights associations. You have BB coming every uh, uh, now and then saying that Muslims are uh, uh, barbaric. They're killing uh, animals, uh, uh, slaughtering animals. And no one defends the humans themselves. We have humans being sacrificed like sheep in Chechnya, in, 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 in uh, Palestine, and here and there, and nobody stands up and say, this is against human rights. But when you slaughter sheep, and you feed on these sheep, people come and say, Islam is a barbaric religion, it sheds uh, uh, lights, and it does this, and it does that. This is the Sunnah, and we may never divert from it. So non Muslims also uh, slaughtered animals to eat, to feed? Some of them, yes, they eat animals, but unfortunately uh, uh, the majority do not slaughter. Eggs and chickens. They e either uh, um, kill uh, uh, the animal by hitting it on the head with a hammer, or by stinging it, or by injecting it, or by electrifying it. And all of these, uh, these forms of, of killing makes the animal unlawful for us to kill. As Muslims, we can only eat the meat of an animal that was slaughtered by a Muslim, a Jew, or a Christian. If these two conditions were not fulfilled, then we may not eat this animal. And this leads us to another problem, which is not within the seerah, that one should be careful of the meat he eats, especially if he's not living in Muslim countries. It's not enough for you to go and uh, to a restaurant in a country where you know that it, uh, the rules and regulations of that country that you may not slaughter. There are countries in Europe that forbids slaughtering animals. They say you have to kill the animal for, first by uh, hitting it with a hammer on the head, smashing its skull. Once it's dead, then you may start cutting the meat. Now, this is called meita, dead animal. We're not allowed to eat from it. But we sacrifice animals every year in Hajj because this is the doing of Abraham, of Ishmael, of our Prophet Muhammad And this is the least painful uh, 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 procedure to be followed with animals. And this is what the, 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 the I, I don't know the uh, it's not the physicians uh, it's uh, the doctors responsible of uh, animals uh, they have a word for that the uh, vet the vet uh, veterinarians or something, something yeah. like this yeah the vets uh, so they say by slaughtering an animal though it is shaking and trembling. It does not feel anything because you have cut the spinal cord and they are senseless. They don't have any sense. This is the easiest way, the most humane way to kill an animal. Not like hitting it on the head or electrifying it where it's in pain and misery all the time. And again, diverting from our main topic, uh, uh, Islam is the most humane religion and practice to, with animals. The Prophet ﷺ tells us that whenever you want to slaughter an animal, you have to sharpen your knife. It is a sin to slaughter your animal with a dull knife. Though you're going to kill it eventually, but the pain, torture. the torture is forbidden. And again, <clears throat> the Prophet tells us ﷺ that uh, he once saw a man, and he, the man, was slaughtering a sheep in... Uh, uh, the range while the other sheep were, were watching in front of other sheep. So the Prophet was furious and angry with him. And he told him, do you want to kill the sheep twice? Don't you fear Allah Azza wa Jal? Whenever you want to slaughter a sheep, slaughter it in isolation from the others so that they do not feel the pain. They are animals. This is what we think. These sheep are animals. 
Yet the Prophet told us yes. that they have feelings and you may not do this with the animal in front of the others. And a religion like this, does it promote slaughtering captives? Does it promote kidnapping and killing people indiscriminately? Does it promote bombing terrorist attacks? No. Definitely no. not. Yes. So who's ever doing this definitely does not know our Prophet ﷺ. Does not know our religion and definitely is not a proper Muslim. He is really mercy to mankind. That is our Prophet ﷺ. He is the mercy to mankind. And we will get to this inshallah later on, but just an, as an example, the Prophet ﷺ once saw a camel. And the camel was weeping. And the Prophet ﷺ, by Allah Azza wa empowering him, got to understand what the camel was saying. And he was furious. And he said, who's the owner of this camel? The man says, I I'm the owner of the camel, O Prophet of Allah. Why aren't you feeding him? Why are, why are you carrying so much on him? Fear Allah Azza wa Be aware that Allah Azza wa will punish you as you punish this camel. This is the mercy not to mankind, not to the jinn. He is the mercy to all, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was sent to all mankind and to the jinn and to everyone on this planet. So, coming back to our uh, 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 Zamzam uh, and Abdul Muttalib, yeah. he, uh, Abdullah, the father of Prophet sallam, was spared because of the sacrifice of this 100 camels. And nowadays, the blood money, you know what the blood money is. Yes. If someone kills someone by mistake or kills him deliberately, then those, the, the, the family of the victim, have the right either to ask for blood money or to ask for execution. The blood money is estimated in 100 camels, the value of 100 camels. I'm afraid that this is all the time we have for today's program. So inshallah, until we meet next time, fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.